Yes. Welcome to today's Consumer Studies Revision Lesson. My name is Lillian Dube, and this lesson is brought to you by the Northern Cape Department of Education in collaboration with Pagama Research and Development. Right, great talks. Our knowledge area today is revision, and the topic is a revision lesson. Right, learners, uh, let's look at the objectives for today's lesson. We want to revise the questions from past exam papers in preparation for the exams. And learners, all these are questions that we are revising. We have already covered the topics, right? We will start with um, the multiple choice questions or the short questions. That is, uh, question one says various options are provided as possible answers to the following questions. Choose the answer and only write the letter A to D next to the question numbers. Right, a 1.1 says a percentage at which the price of goods and services increases is called A, interest rate, B, inflation rate, C, prime interest rate, and D, the repo rate, right? Let us answer 1.1 and then we can go to question 1.2. Right, we proceed to the next question. 1.2 reads, the body that collects taxes on behalf of the government is A, SARS, B, SABC, and then C says SABS, and D, SARB, right? In the 1.3, again says an example of a non-renewable energy is A, wind power, B, hydropower, C, fossil fuels, and D, solar power. Right, learners? Answer these two questions and then we can proceed to question four. Right, our uh, question four says an illegal pyramid scheme A pays out equal amounts of money to all members. B, sell goods or services to customers. C, follows fair trade practices in all dealings. And D, pays members compensation for recruiting new members. In the 1.5 reads, the type of bread that is exempted from VAT is A, brown bread, B, white bread, C, rye bread, and D, whole wheat bread, right? Answer 1.4 and 1.5. Then we can proceed to our next question. Right, let's go to the next question, which is um, 1.6, which says, Dash has an incubation period of 28 days or three to five weeks. That is A, E. coli, B, dysentery, C, gastroenteritis, and D, hepatitis A. Right, in 1.7 says Dash adds to the color of some potato treats, crisps. A, lecithin, B, MSG or monosodium glutamate, and then C, tetrazine, and D, aspartame. Right, answer 1.6 and 1.7. Right, let's proceed to 1.8. It says the information found on a food label 
will assist in making healthier food choices. That is A, country of origin, B, manufacturer's details, C, saving suggestions, and D, nutritional information. Right, do 1.8 and then we can proceed. Right, uh, 1.9 says abnormally high glucose levels in the blood will lead to A, diabetes, B, hyperglycemia, C, hypoglycemia, and D, anemia. Right, 1.10 says dash are irradiated because of their high bacterial load. A, yogurt and cheese. B, spices and herbs. C, apple and orange juice. And D, butter and flour. Right? Answer 1.9 and 1.10, and then we can go to the answers together. All right, learners, let's go to the solutions of our multiple choice questions. So, question 1.1 says, the percentage at which the price of goods and services increases is called inflation rate, right? So when the prices of goods and services increase, also we call that uh, the inflation rate. Apparently, the inflation rises, right? And then 1.2 says the body that collects taxes on behalf of the government is SARS, right? SARS stands for South African Revenue Services. So they collect taxes, right? And then 1.3 says an example of a non-renewable energy. Remember, let us read and understand the what? The question, non-renewable. That is um, the type of energy that cannot be renewed. So, fossil fuels are non renewable. And one example of fossil fuels is the coal that is abundant here in South Africa. It is the one that we use for generating our electricity. And it is a non renewable energy. It means it can only be used once. Right, we cannot reuse it again. Right, then um, 1.4 says an illegal pyramid scheme. Right, A pays out equal amounts of money to all members, B sells goods or services to customers, C follows fair trade practices in all dealings, and D pays uh, members compensation for recruiting new members, right? So our correct answer is D. So again, you are supposed to take note of the word illegal, illegal, something that is not allowed. So D is our correct answer in this case. So it pays members compensation for what? For recruiting new members, right? And 1.5 says the type of bread that is exempted from value added tax. That is, if we say exempted, it means value added tax is not included in the price of that type of bread. In this case, it is brown bread, right? So A is our correct answer. Brown bread is not charged VAT. Right, 1.6 says DASH has an incubation period of 28 to three or three to five weeks, right? Incubation period means um, the disease, that is the time when the disease starts to what? To show symptoms. That is uh, within a period of 28 to what? 
uh, two or three to five weeks. So in this case, our answer is D, hepatitis A. Right, and then uh, 1.7 says dash adds to the color of some potato crisps. In this case, our answer is C, that is tartrazine. Right, let's go to the next one. 1.8 says the information find on food labels will assist in making healthier food choices. So which information will assist in making healthier food choices? That is the nutritional information, right? You need to know which nutrients are found in that particular food so that you can make healthier food choices. Right, and then 1.9 says um, abnormally high glucose levels in the blood will lead to, that is high glucose levels, will lead to hyperglycemia. So our answer is B. Remember, hyperglycemia is high glucose levels and hypoglycemia is low glucose levels in the blood. Right? And then our one point ten states dash are irradiated because of their high bacterial load. Right? Remember, herbs and spices are the ones that are irradiated. So our answer in this case is B. Right? Let's go to the next question, learners. I hope you got this correct. Just mark yourself and see how much you got out of 10. Right, uh, 1.2 says give one term for each of the following descriptions. Right, 1.2.1 says all members contribute funds and are paid by the scheme. And then our 1.2.2 says conducting unreasonable practices to the consumer. 1.2.3 says protect a party in a contract from blame or guilt. 1.2.4, cancellation of a sale that was influenced by direct marketing. And 1.2.5, all members sell products for the scheme. And the last one, 1.2.6, products sold in a country without the consent of the manufacturer, right? So remember, you're supposed to just give one term for each of the following descriptions. I'll give you three minutes, learners, to do 1.2, then we can do the solutions together. Welcome back, learners. Let's go to the solutions for 1.2. The first one we say is, we say uh, all members contribute to the fund and are paid by the scheme. So our answer is a stock fail. So when uh, members of a stock fail usually contribute money to a common cause, right? It's either they want to share the money at the end of the year or sometimes they use that money to buy groceries. So they co-contribute funds and they are paid by the scheme, right? And then conducting unreasonable practices to the consumer, we call it unfair business practices. And then 1.2.3, protect a party in a contract from blame or guilt. We call it the exemption clause, right? And then cancellation of a sale that was influenced by direct marketing. We call that the cooling of period, right? Let's go to our 1.2.5 says all members sell products for the scheme. We call that multi-level marketing. 
For example, um, Tapawe is an is one example of multi-level marketing whereby the members sell a product, right? There is a product that they are selling. So we call it multi-level marketing, right? And 1.2.6 products sold in a country without the consent of the manufacturer. We call that gray goods or parallel imports, right? Let's go to the next question says, uh, match the description in column B with the term in column A, right? I'll read the columns uh, to you. Column A is 1.3.1 says a deed of sale. And 1.3.2 is lease agreement. 1.3.3 is offer to purchase, right? We are supposed to match column A with column B, right? Column B says um, a document that states the amount that a potential buyer is prepared to pay for a property, right? And then B part of it says an agreement detailing all the changes to be made on a property, right? And then C, a legal signed agreement between a buyer and a seller, right? And then D says a document indicating the date of occupation of a property, right? And then we go to E says a document indicating all the defects in a rental property. And then F says an agreement signed by both the property owner and the tenant. Right, learners? We are supposed to match column A and column B, right? Um, column B, that is the description, and then the term is in column A, right? I'll give you three minutes to answer the questions, and then we can go to our solutions. I hope uh, you have uh, finished answering. Let's go to the answers of our questions. 1.3.1 says a deed of sale. So which description matches a deed of sale, right? In this case, we have got C. And what does C say? A deed of sale is a legal signed agreement between the buyer of a property and a seller. Right, in 1.3.2 says a lease agreement, right? Lease agreement matches with F. And what does F say? It says an agreement signed by both the property owner and the tenant. So that is the landlord and the person who is what? Who is renting, whom we call a what? A tenant, right? And then 1.3.3, Offer to purchase, right? Offer to purchase matches with what? With A. And what does A say? It says a document that states the amount that a potential buyer is prepared to pay for a property. Remember, if you want to buy a house, you do what we call an offer to purchase. People advertise their houses. Uh, with a certain amount, and then the buyer actually offers on how much they are prepared to pay. So we call that an offer to purchase. Right, learners? I also hope you got um, these ones correct. Mark yourself and see how much you got. Right, then we go to our next question. Uh, which is uh, 2.1, which says, name the document that promises to repair, replace, or refund appliances by the seller or manufacturer after being bought, right? 
And then 2.2 says, list the municipal services that a homeowner or household must pay for. 2.3 says, name three ways of saving water when using a washing machine. And 2.4 says, state four ways of saving electricity when cooking. And 2.5 says, name two practices that most scams have in common. And 2.6, explain how consumers can protect themselves from online scams. Right, I'll give you three minutes to answer the questions and then we can go to the solutions. Welcome back. I hope uh, you are done answering. Then let's go to the solutions of our questions. Right, we go to 2.1, which says, name the document that promises to repair, replace, or refund appliances by the seller or manufacturer after being bought. Right, when we buy appliances, what do they come with? They come with a warranty and a guarantee. So it's either you got a get a warranty or a guarantee, which is a promise. It's actually a written promise um, to repair, replace, or refund appliances by the seller. That is if they fail to do what they are supposed to do or if they fail to work. Right? Then 2.2 says, name the municipal as services that a homeowner or household must pay. Right? We pay for water, we pay for electricity, we pay for sewage or sanitation, as well as refuse removal or garbage removal. Right? And then our 2.3 says, name three ways of saving water when using a washing machine, right? Take note, washing machine, using water. Then saving water. That's another um, key word to this question, right? So what are you supposed to do? You must use appropriate water levels, just enough uh, water for the amount of washing. So how do we wash at home, learners? If it's just a small load of clothes, we select the function that is supposed to use. Also, the amount of water that what that matches the load. You cannot fill up the whole drum of washing machine when you when you are only washing just a small load. So that's how we save water when we are using a washing machine. Right, it says wash two loads of washing. Right, we usually wait until there is a bigger load or there is a full load, then we can wash it once. Right, and then also clean the washing machine filter regularly, that helps to save water. Right, also, we must use high efficiency washing machines. These days, um, technology keeps on upgrading. It means some of the washing machines use high efficiency or they are very efficient when it comes to washing and some of them actually save water, right? Uh, the next one says use front loaders instead of top loader machines, right? I'm sure you remember, Lenas, when we did... Um, appliances, household appliances, we said front loaders use less water compared to what? To top loaders. Right? And then you must also check for leaks at host connections, right? The connections are behind the machine that brings in water into the machine and the ones that uh, take water out of the 
washing machine. Just check if there are no leaks so that we can also save water. Right, and then the last one says gray water from the washing machine can be reused to water the garden. So the water that we use for washing is called gray water. So remember, we have got gray water and black water. Black water is from where, learners? It's from the toilet, right? Let's go to 2.4 says, take four ways of saving electricity when cooking, right? So in this case, we want to save electricity when what? When we are cooking. How do you save electricity when cooking, right? You must plan meals before hand, right? Cook more than one meal at a time to make the best use of the what? Of the stove. So you must plan your cooking first. Then you can cook one uh, more than one meal at a time, right? And then you also must match the size of the saucepan with the size of the stove plate, right? If you are using a small uh, saucepan, then put it on the what? On the smaller stove plate. If it's a bigger saucepan, then put it on the what? On the bigger stove plate. That helps to do what? To save energy or electricity, right? And then switch off a stove plate before cooking is completed, allowing cooking to be what? To be completed at a lower heat, right? So before you even finish cooking, we switch off the stove because the plate remains hot for some time. Right, it will finish off the cooking while this, the stove is what is off already. Right, and then keep the oven door closed until cooking is um, complete. Right, if you keep opening and closing the oven, you are allowing what you call drafts. That is the cold air from outside enters the oven and then the oven has to use more energy so that it maintains the temperature that is needed inside the oven. So avoid opening the oven doors. Remember, learners, ovens have got light in them. Instead of opening the door, use the light inside the oven to check if your food is cooked or not. Again, there is more disadvantages of opening the oven besides wasting electricity, right? If we are baking in the oven things like cakes and Swiss rolls, the cream puffs that you prepared when you um, do your pet, if you open the oven, if cold air comes in, the dish that you are preparing will flop. Apparently, the cakes will lose the air and flop. So avoid opening the oven door, right? And then make one pot, meals, or cook more than one dish in the oven, right? One pot meal, what are we talking about, right? If it's a stew, then it means you only cook everything inside the pot, right? You don't have to use another plate or another um, saucepan to cook, but you only cook everything in what? In one saucepan. Again, in the oven, you can also put more than one dish in the oven, thereby saving electricity. Right, then we go to 2.4 says state four ways of saving electricity when cooking. So we continue with that one. The other point says use a kettle to um use a kettle to boil water, as this uses 50% less electricity. So this is supposed to be oil. Use um, a kettle to boil water is this saves 50% electricity than using a pot. So how does this save um, electricity? If you use a pot, it means you have to switch on the stove plate 
the stove plate is heated, and then you put on the, uh, the pot on the stove, it has to be heated again until the water boils. Then it means more what? More electricity is used. But when you use um, a kettle, the water boils instantly. The, the element in the kettle is in direct contact with the what? With the water. So it boils much faster. Right? And then um, the next point says cut food into smaller pieces as it will cook quicker. So we can uh, give, ex here we can give an example of potatoes. If you put, uh, if you boil a potato whole as it is, it takes much longer um, to get soft. But when you cut the potato into small pieces, it will cook much quicker than when it is whole. So always cut your food into smaller pieces as it will what? As it will cook quicker, right? And then the last one says, check if the rubber seal on the oven is intact. Why the rubber seal? Because if it is not, if it doesn't close completely, then it means some of the heat actually leaks out of the oven through the what? Through the rubber seal that is not intact. Right? And then 2.5 says, name two practices that most scams have in common. Right? Uh, people are being scammed out there because there are so many things that they don't really take note of. Right? So these scams have got so many things in common. Right? So the first thing that scammers do is they steal money from people and no goods or services are received. So stealing of money is one common practice and the fact that you don't receive your goods or services is something that is very common with what? With all the scams, right? Also stealing of personal information that is identity theft, right? Stealing of personal information is something that is common. And also banking details from unsuspecting consumers. They steal your personal information, that is uh, your name, your identity number, and also maybe your banking details, right? Your bank account number, right? Also the pressure customers to acting immediately, right? Scammers would always make you feel desperate by saying uh, maybe the products that you want to purchase, they'll tell you um, these products are selling very fast. We are only left with two. That is doing what? That is pressuring you to do what? To act immediately. So once they tell you we only have two products left, then you are put under pressure to do what? To buy the product that does not even exist, right? Also, the other one is impersonating. That is, they act as genuine businesses, right? They will tell you we have an office somewhere. They give you the phone number to that office. You call the office and somebody will do what? Will answer the phone, then you are made to believe that this is the what? A genuine business. And then you do business with them. At the end of the day, you are scammed. Right? They also use technology. Right? Technology keeps changing or it's very much advanced. So they are able to use technology to scam you. That is, um, Access your banking details uh, and also stealing your what? Your personal information through technology. Right, learners, let's go to 2.6. They explain how customers can protect themselves from online scams. So one day, one of us will get scammed. So we should have. Uh, information on how to protect ourselves 
from getting scammed or we must always be on the lookout or on the alert so that we do not get scammed, right? One, you must always guard against work from home scams that promise a lot of money, right? They will tell you that you can work from home and earn so much, but you are supposed to first pay a registration fee of this much. If you are working, why should you pay a registration fee, right? And then also ensure that the websites you are buying goods from are legitimate, right? They should be safe and have security locks or software, right? Most of the times we are scammed through the websites that we buy from, we buy goods from um, online websites. So just make sure that these are what are legitimate websites. Right? Also, do not respond to emails or SMSs saying that you have won a prize or lottery. You haven't even um, done this lottery thing or entered any competition, but suddenly you get an email or SMS that says you have, you have won lottery or you have won a prize of so much. For us, to give you the price money, you must deposit so much. You see, by doing that, you are actually doing what? Exposing your banking details. By sending them that money, it means you have exposed your banking details or you have actually given them money. Once you deposit the money, you don't get anything in return. Right? Also, do not help anyone financially if you have to provide banking details, right? Sometimes they ask for assistance and ask you to deposit money into a certain bank account. That is, you are transferring money from your account into somebody else's account, thereby exposing your, what? your banking details. Right? Also delete suspicious or unfamiliar emails. We call them spams. It's a spam without opening, right? So if you think um, an email is suspicious, never open it. Just delete it without opening. If you open it, then it means you are actually getting scammed or exposing yourself to the scammers, right? Also check your bank or credit card statements regularly. Check that there are no funny withdrawals that are made from your what? From your bank account or anything that is bought using your what? Your credit card. Right, learners, then we proceed with 2.6 again, says do not provide banking details or personal information or PIN or password, OTP, CCV number online. So you must never give an OTP online, CCV number, that is the number at the back of your credit or debit card or any passwords or PIN online, right? Again, you must also choose strong passwords to prevent being hacked, right? Simple passwords are the ones that allow people to scam us. Some people can actually guess our passwords using the year we were born. They sometimes use uh, our names and so many things that are more common that we use. So if you have to choose a password, make sure it's a very strong password that is difficult to crack, right? And then let's go to 2.7 says, give two reasons why people pay provisional tax. And 2.8 says, explain why compound interest is more expensive than simple interest. Then 2.9 says, describe the role that municipalities 
should play in helping their communities to recover from flood challenges. Right, I'll give you three minutes, learners, to answer 2.7 to 2.9, and then we can do the solutions together. Welcome back, everybody. I'm sure you are done with 2.7, 2.8, and 2.9. Then let's go to our answers. Right? 2.7, give two reasons why people pay provisional tax. I'm sure you still remember what provisional tax is. It is the tax that is not paid regularly, especially the farmers pay what we call provisional tax, right? Um, people who pay provisional tax receive an irregular income, right? They don't receive their income on a monthly basis. That's why we say it is irregular. And I've given you an example of farmers. Farmers only go through the planting season, they go through the harvesting season, and then that's when they can do it they can sell their yield from the farms. So after that, that's when they can be able to do it, to pay tax. So it means their income is what is irregular. It's not on a monthly basis, right? Um, also, so that they will not be required to pay a large amount of tax at once, right? And then also their income cannot be taxed on monthly basis because it varies and is not guaranteed, right? If we're saying not guaranteed, we're saying, uh, what if there is drought in that particular year and they don't harvest anything? So their income is not what is not guaranteed, right? And then people who receive income from more than one source, right? So these are the reasons why people pay what? Provisional tax, right? Then 2.8 says, explain why compound interest is more expensive than simple interest, right? We start with uh, the compound interest is more expensive because interest is added on the principal amount and it is also added to interest accumulated to date, right? Compound interest is when interest is charged on top of the principal amount and also onto the interest, right? And then simple interest, uh, this is interest only charged on the principal amount. So interest is only charged on the in principal amount and not on the interest like we said on what? On compound interest. Right? Then 2.9, describe the role that municipalities should play in helping their communities to recover from flood challenges. Right? We usually have floods, the houses are taken away, and all sorts of things, the roads are also washed away. So how, what role should the municipalities play in order to help their communities to recover from these flood challenges, right? The, um, the municipalities must provide clean, safe, and fresh water, to the communities, they must also fix electrical problems that might have happened during flooding, right? They must also provide shelter for people who lost their homes in community walls, right? They must also repair the infrastructure, such as the port walls in their area that might have developed due to what? due to flooding, right? They must also ensure that there is what? There is proper 
sanitation, right? So these are the things that uh, the municipalities should do for their communities to recover from what? From the, from the floods, right? And then uh, 2.9 says, describe the role that municipalities have played. We have already answered this. Then uh, we need uh, only the three last points. They say, clean the stormwater drains to prevent more flooding of the streets and the yards. Apparently, what causes uh, flooding is because the drainages have got a lot of litter that is thrown out by us, so it is washed by the water so that it blocks the drainages. If the drainages are blocked, then that's when we end up with what? With floods. So the roads get flooded, our houses get flooded, instead of that water going through the what? through the drainages. So we must clear the debris or litter after the floods, right? Also, they must establish fire and disaster management services to protect and rescue lives, right? And then our 2.10 says, read the extract below and answer the questions that follow, right? The consumer price index CPI in South Africa increased to 109.40 points in April from 109 in March. Right? Explain how a high consumer price index may affect South African consumers. And then also evaluate the impact that alternative sources of alternative sources by households during load shedding may have an impact on the environment. So we are saying, uh, I'll reread 2.10.2, right? Evaluate the impact that alternative sources of energy by households during load shedding may have on the environment. So it's supposed to be sources of alternative sources of energy, right? There's supposed to be the word energy there, right? So let's answer 2.10.1 and 2.10.2, then we can do the solutions together. I'm sure you are done with the questions. Uh, let's go to the solutions. 2.10.1 says, explain how a high consumer price index may affect South African consumers, right? So the inflation rate is based on the what? On the consumer price index. So the higher the inflation rate, the less a consumer can purchase with the same amount of money, which means they will have what? Less disposable income. So if the inflation rate goes up, it means the consumer's money still remains the same and it's difficult for them to what? To purchase uh, with that particular amount and they have less disposable money or they have less savings. Uh, should I say, right? All household in items will increase in price and make them much more unaffordable, right? And then some consumers may not be able to pay for their basic needs. So it means in this case, the consumers will what? Will suffer. Right, and 2.10.1 says, explain how a high consumer price index may affect South African consumers. So we are still continuing with what? 2.10.1. The Reserve Bank uses the CPI to set interest rates. Therefore, households will be pay paying more interest 
on their debt as interest rate would be higher. So once the interest rates are higher, it means consumers will pay more on the what? On whatever they are owing, right? Then we go to 2.10.2 says evaluate the impact uh, that alternative sources of energy by households during load shedding may have on the environment, right? Most of the alternative sources of energy have a negative impact on the environment. They contribute to what? To global warming. That is one possible answer. Or you can say households using solar or renewable sources of energy, that is not harmful to the environment and it reduces global warming. So these are the two possible answers that you can have, right? And then if you have said they have a positive impact, the positive impact is that gas is the cleanest what? fossil fuel, or the alternative that they can use is inverters, right? And inverters um, have no noise pollution when they are being used. Another alternative could be solar energy, right? Solar energy uses the sun, which is a renewable source of energy. That is also not harmful to the environment. So again, solar has no noise or air pollution while it is being used, right? So in this case, we are looking at the positive impact of what? Of alternative energy sources, right? And then when we look at the negative impact, still looking at gas, it can also, gas can cause unpleasant odors while being used, right? And also, gas is a non-renewable source of energy. And then, if you are using inverter and inverter as an alternative source, apparently inverters use electricity to recharge, which has a what? A large carbon footprint. More coal needs to be bent to generate the electricity to charge that particular inverter that is an alternative source. So burning coal causes pollution to our environment. Also, coal is a non-renewable source of energy, right? Then negative impact generators. A generator could use diesel or petrol and, um, Diesel or petrol is made out of what? Out of crude oil. And crude oil is what? Is a non-renewable source of energy, which causes um, air pollution when it is burnt. Right? It also creates noise when it is being used. Right? So that is the negative impact of what? of alternative sources of energy that people use these days during load shading. Our question three says, explain the following terms. Food additives, stabilizers, antioxidants, and then 3.4 says, explain the advantages of irradiation. And 3.5 says, explain the possible negative impact of organically grown foods on the natural environment. Right, two minutes for you to answer the question and then we can do the solutions together. Right, welcome back, learners. Food additives, we've already done this so many times. So food additives are natural or chemical substances added to products during processing or production to perform a specific function. 
and that specific function is to improve the flavor of food, the texture, the taste, the color, as well as to preserve the food, right? And then stabilizers, they are used to maintain a uniform dispersion of two immiscible substances. It helps to improve the texture, the consistency, and the smoothness of food. And then antioxidants prevent the oxidation of food that can lead to rancidity, discoloration, and lengthens the shelf life. Right? And 3.4 explain the advantages of irradiation. Right? Food irradiation destroys microorganisms in food, makes food safer to eat by preventing foodborne diseases. It also extends the shelf life of food. It delays the sprouting of potatoes, onions, garlic, as well as the ripening of fruits. It also destroys insects on the cereal and tropical fruit that is exported. Right, and then 3.5 explain the possible negative impact of organically grown foods on the natural environment. Right, um, imported organic food may be transported by planes, and this may contribute to what to air pollution. More land is needed to grow organic food than the same amount of non organic food. And then mechanical methods of weed control can lead to greater energy use, thus contributing to what? To a higher carbon footprint, right? And then we get to the summary of our lesson learners. We say the consumer price index determines the inflation rate in the country. Also, we said irradiation destroys microorganisms in food and also lengthens the shelf life of food. Irradiation delays the ripening of fruits and sprouting of some vegetables. Right? Most, of, uh, most of the alternative sources of energy have a negative impact on the environment. They contribute to global warming. Right? And the last one we said, Households use solar or a renewable source of energy that is not harmful to the environment. And it also reduces global warming. Right, the 12th, we have come to the end of our lesson. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next lesson.